Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about two NAS drives. I want to talk about these two four bay devices that have been released now in summer 2020. This is the Synology DS920 Plus and we're comparing it against the brand new Terramaster F4 F4422. So these two NAS devices actually don't have a vast amount in common. They are four bay NASs. They're both Intel powered, both quad core Intel powered too. They both arrive with four gig of memory. They both arrive with two 1GBE LAN ports. They both support SSD caching. They both support their own operating system. They both support BTRFS. They both arrive with a warranty. They both arrive with a myriad of first and third party applications. They arrive with apps that can be installed by the web browser for mobile phone uh, and, they, and for Mac and Windows client systems. They can both support the very latest 16 TB hard drive, Seagate Ironwolf uh, NAS hard drives via SATA. And with both of them having four bays, it means both of them can support raw up to 64 terabytes. So they're really similar, really. I mean, I say they're not that similar. They've got quite a lot in common. However, it's kind of the execution of both of these brands and their hardware that I want to talk about today because the price difference between these two is actually quite noticeable. The Synology DS920 Plus arrives at around 550 Nicker, with the Terramaster F4 arriving at about 430. So there's a price difference there of about 100 to 120 quid. So a huge disparity between them for 120 quid. But before we go any further, I'm going to make it abundantly clear that this device does make up that money. You do get your money's worth for spending an extra 120 or so quid. The 920 does fulfill that money. It does give you stuff for that money. Okay. So when I talk about the disparity between them, don't focus too much on that number. Focus on the fact that the 550 has got more with that money when you buy it. You are getting more for your money. But the point of today's video is also, do you even need it? Because a lot of you are scraping the barrel to buy your very first NAS. You want to make sure the one that you buy is a prosumer device. You want one that's got a nice high glass ceiling that you're not going to have to worry within the next two years to upgrade. And that's a very good reason to consider the Terramaster because... Although it doesn't have a lot of the hardware bells and whistles of the 920, it does have some of its own. And also, if you're not going to utilize a lot of the ones from the Synology, this might be a better spend for a number of reasons. But let's talk a bit about the internal uh, hardware of these devices. They both arrive with Intel CPUs, sure, but it's a very different CPU. Not hugely different, really, when I say it aloud. The 920 arrives with a J4125, and that processor is an Intel quad-core CPU at 2.0 GHz that can be burst up to 2.7 GHz. With 4K transcoding support, um, AES NI level encryption support, a great floating point, and support of DDR4 memory, of which you arrive with 4 gig that can be upgraded to 8. The internal hardware of that CPU and memory are excellent. Now, on the Terramaster, they are utilizing the previous generation Intel, which, although it's still a very, very good CPU, is showing age a little bit. The J3455, that is a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor that can be burst up to 2.3. Again, 4K and 1080p transcoding. Again, AES, NI, and a great floating point all built in. But the memory is DDR3 memory with 4 gig by default that can be upgraded to 8 gig. It has to be said that although both of these devices have been released within about a month of each other, the internal hardware of the Synology is that much better. You are getting a better CPU and memory overall, and it would be very remiss not to highlight that. If you go to CPU Benchmark, the Terramaster CPU there ranks at around 2,500, with the Synology CPU breaking into the 3,000 ranks. Now, on the subject of internal hardware, let's talk a little bit about that internal hardware, not just the traditional CPU and memory. Although both of them have got four bays of storage, both of them can be populated with just a single drive if you choose, and then add drives later. Both arrive with BTRFS support, so you've got 
file self-healing, you've got shared folder duplication made easier and a lower resource imprint during snapshot generation on both of them. However, it's worth noting the Synology does have its own proprietary RAID configuration as well. Although they both support RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, the Synology also supports SHR, their own RAID system that allows you to mix and match drives, something you're almost certainly not going to do on day one. But years down the line, when you buy bigger hard drives, the ability to mix drives in a RAID array and get the best possible outlook will probably be quite useful. Now, I mentioned that memory earlier on. It's worth highlighting the Terramaster has got two memory bays inside, two Sodium DDR3 bays. The Synology only has one Sodium bay, with the other bay already pre... Uh, there is no other bay, I should say. It is um, memory that's been soldered directly onto the controller board inside. So it's worth highlighting that about them, that you can kind of change the memory a little bit on this, but again, you are both looking at... You're looking at NASes here with an 8 gig official maximum memory support. And although we've experimented with more than that, it's worth highlighting that the manufacturer may not back you up down the line by using an unsupported configuration. Now, the last thing I want to talk about with internal hardware, it's worth highlighting that I did say that both of them support SSD caching, but it is worth highlighting that the TerraMaster requires you to populate your bays with SATA SSDs in order to take advantage of SSD caching. One, if you want to do read-only caching, two of them if you want read and write caching. The Synology does have the ability to let you install SSDs in the main base, but the real winner is the fact that the base of the device has two dedicated NVMe bays that allow you to install super fast PCIe uh, Gen 3 times 4 NVMe's and take advantage of that and enormous speed you get from them to further improve the internal operation speeds of your hard drives in that RAID array. Now, again, you the fact that you've got those dedicated bays means that you've got more drives available for the hard drive storage and is another reason why the Synology is probably a more solid choice between them. However, one thing worth talking about is network connections because I did mention both of them have got 1GBE LAN ports, which they do have. They've both got two 1GBE LAN ports. But what I will also highlight is the fact that the TerraMaster has 10 GBE. Now, that is a very, very big deal. And that, I think if you didn't know that, changes everything. Because one of the biggest criticisms I've heard from a number of you about the Synology 920 is the fact that it's got this tremendous bottleneck of 2 GBE if you use link aggregation, otherwise 1 GBE each. And that means 1 GBE, which corresponds to about 100 megabytes per second, means that your interactions with this device cannot exceed that number. And if you are utilizing multiple hard drives, with the average hard drive giving you somewhere from 150 to 250 megabytes per second, based on the architecture and the build, that is an enormous bottleneck, particularly in light of the utilization of NVMe SSD caching inside this device, that it just seems weird that you would only get one or two GBE. Whereas the TerraMaster has both a dedicated 10 GBE controller inside and that external port. That means if you do install four hard drives inside this, you are gonna get somewhere between 450 and 550 megabytes per second read and write by 10 gb which is great for photo editors raw photo maybe low in video or fully populate the device with ssds and get somewhere in excess of seven to eight hundred megabytes per second transmission over 10 gbe for you to edit photo and video files directly cable to cable alternatively introduce this nas to a 10 gbe network environment so connecting this to a 10 GBE switch or a budget switch that's only got the one 10 GBE port will mean you can attach this and then up to 10 users will get full one GBE each communication with the NAS. Whereas this device, you only get one GBE at 100 or so megs or two GBE with link aggregation at 200 megs. And you can still get that anyway with these. And although both devices have got USB 3, it's effectively just for UPSs printers, external USB drives, for another tier to your backup strategy, which they both support. So in terms of hardware architecture, I think we can all agree that the Synology largely wins in terms of hardware, but we cannot overlook the fact that this is a NAS that's arriving at a very affordable price point 
with 10 GBE on four bays and an Intel powered NAS with four gig of memory with 10 GBE at that price point really cannot be overlooked. Now, we could talk about software and of course we will in a little bit, but right now I want to talk about design because this is probably a big point for a number of us. These devices are largely made to just be set up and forgotten. They are designed to either be put in a little server room on a desk in a cupboard. If you are gonna edit over 10 GBU, you'll be quite close to it, but for the most part, you'll never really see these devices. Still, nevertheless, aesthetic design is still a big deal. And these two devices have gone a very different way in terms of their design. You can see the two four bay slots there on the front, but for the most part, they're very, very different. You're definitely getting the impression that the TerraMaster chassis is one that they've clearly got a chassis that they use for a number of different devices like their five bay and their other four bay devices and they've reutilized it but unfortunately you've got these large areas on the side of relative wasted space which i'm less keen on um, the rest of the chassis seems fine with the two cooling fans which can be lowered and heightened in the individual software and a great disbursement of ports likewise lots of ventilation on the base but the sides of the device on this metal chassis do have the logo but it does feel slightly budget in terms of design. It's a little bit dated as far as a chassis looks. The Synology, on the other hand, has been utilizing this chassis in a number of their units for a number of years, but it's worth highlighting this just seemingly has a nicer design to it. Even the logo on the side there is ventilated for additional passive cooling systems to work with the rear fans. The chassis seems smaller. It's plastic all the way around, so there isn't a combination of metal and plastic as found on the TerraMaster, and it has those two rear fans which can be controlled by the software. So there's ventilation on the sides, ventilation on the base, and ventilation around those trays by angling the device around. A lot of architecture and work and design has gone into this casing, which it will be very difficult to ignore. So if we look at the trays inside these devices, we can take a good look about the way they've gone. Now, TerraMaster have improved the trays on their NASs over the years. They really have. I was there at the early generations and they were pretty hideous. But these are much, much nicer. And although they're plastic, they're very rugged in design. And they've got screw holes there for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. Whereas the Synology tray, plastic feels a little flimsier. I'll be completely honest but it has those screw holes for two and a half inch media drives and it's click and load, so no screwdriver required with the drive being very easily installed. Not a huge buying point, but I do quite like that slick design that Synology tends to bring to the table. Also, the trays on the Synology can be locked with a set of keys included with the accessory pack, whereas the TerraMaster, the trays aren't lockable. Now, the lockable trays aren't really there to prevent theft, let's be honest. If you wanted to steal a drive from one of these, it would be very easy to do. But ultimately, having those locks there stops a drive being accidentally removed from a bay. Or drives getting caught up on things and effectively keeps them locked in the system together, maybe even in transit. So in terms of aesthetic design, the Synology is probably the nicer looking of the two. But there is a certain marketplace for this TerraMaster chassis design, and it's definitely lower as well, as you can see. Now, we talk about design, and we talk about aesthetic, and we talk about brands. We've got to talk about software. Both brands have got their own graphical user interface, applications, and ultimately an operating system that these devices arrive with. These are a combined hardware and software solution. Both of them have got their own software in the form of TOS and DSM. Now, let's, again, let's just get it out of the way, DSM is the better choice in terms of software. It's got more first party apps, more innovative first party apps as well, such as Synology Chat, Drive, Moments, Office, Calendar, Surveillance, uh, Virtual Machine Manager, Active Backup Suite. There's even more applications coming later in the year with DSM 7. It just arrives with a lot more software inside. There is a degree of third-party app support with things like Plex Media Server, Acronis, and more, as well as iTunes. But the applications inside this are just fantastic. There's even um, a photo AI recognition tool in the form of Synology Moments, as well as Photo Station, Video Station, which rivals Plex Media Server with metadata scraping and 4K and 1080p transcoding. But the TerraMaster 
Although it does have some first party apps and it has support of third party apps, the library is nowhere near as extensive. There's fewer mobile apps, fewer client apps for desktop and fewer applications to see via the graphical user interface. But there are still lots and it has evolved incredibly quickly. And I would probably say TerraMasters GUI is a solid third place in the entire spectrum of NAS software if you're going to utilize their own software. Asus Store and TerraMaster, for my eyes, have fought a number of times about which of their platforms is kind of the third option right now, with Synology and QNAP very solidly holding first and second place, at least for now. But the, as good as that software is and as evolved as it is with the likes of BTRFS, <clears throat> a much more fluid user interface as well on all of those apps, there's just, it comes up lacking. Their virtual machine tool is Java based and third party. Uh, they don't have the all encompassing backup tool that you find on the case of the Synology and Active Backup Suite and Hyper Backup. There are multiple backup tools as well as cloud backup tools, USB backup tools, and NAS to NAS backup tools, but not the kind of single portal full access that the Synology gives you. Again, from things like Active Backup, Hyper Backup, and even Synology Drive with that really great file pinning and file streaming system built into the client app for Windows and coming to Mac later in the year. What I'm saying is the price difference between these two devices is justified. And the 120, 130 quid difference between them with the Synology costing more, you do get your money's worth if you're going to use those apps. But if you're not going to use those apps, and what you want to utilize is bare bones storage. If you want to utilize a 10 GBE network attached storage device that is affordable, powerful, and fast Intel powered, in fact, the TerraMaster F4422 is a great NAS solution. That although on a in mostly any other way, struggles to challenge the 920 in terms of that 10 GBE output and its utility as a, a live editing tool for photo and video users, it is a great solution nevertheless. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you have and click subscribe to learn more. We'll probably be comparing these on the blog very soon, so do check those out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Click like. We'll look at the links in the description to nascompares and span.com and I'll see you next time.